for God. And I say even unto you again this day, I am with you. I am for you, says the Lord God Almighty. I love my people, says the Lord God. And I will defend my people, says the Lord God Almighty. For I, that is who I am. But I also will say this to you. My servant David was a humble man. And even when he came to slay Goliath, he came in humility, says the Lord. He humbled himself and he was willing, says the Lord God, because he learned what it meant to surrender his life to me. Even on the field, says the Lord God, even amongst the sheep, says the Lord God Almighty. He learned to humility. He learned to submit to me as the Lord God Almighty that gave him the strength that it was my anointing that destroyed the bear. It was my anointing that destroyed the lion. It was my anointing and he knew my anointing would destroy Goliath, says the Lord God Almighty. This is it, says the Lord. Humble yourselves under my mighty hand. Do not, says the Lord God, point a finger, says the Lord, but humble yourself and rejoice in me, says the Lord, for it is the victory is in the surrendered heart of my people, says the Lord your God. week what we talked about last week we made, we made a we detonated something didn't we what did we detonate what exploded in this house last Sunday you remember a bag that had yeah we made a bag blow up that had baking soda and vinegar in it because we talked about how when we don't forgive it bottles up inside of us the anger and all the bitterness. And all of a sudden, we'll start blowing up at people in our anger and our frustration. We start hurting other people as a result, don't we? Well, today's lesson is going to be a little different. The topic is a little bit different. And I'm going to use the same ingredients. Uh-oh. Everyone say, uh-oh. <laughs> but I'm going to use it in a different way this time. Because, you know... We know that bad things happen, right? We have troubles, we have problems, we have difficulties. But what does it tell us in Philippians 4, verse 4? Now, the kids, you might not know this, but I think you've heard this before. It says to rejoice sometimes. Is that what it says? No, it says to rejoice in the Lord always, all the time. So how can you rejoice when something bad is happening? Like, honestly, how can, you be, how can you have joy when there's something bad happening, a bad situation, a problem, a trouble? Well, it says in the Bible that we're to have the joy of the Lord, and it's the joy of the Lord that we can have. We may not be happy, but we can have joy in our heart. Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the joy because when we know Jesus, right? When we know Jesus and we believe in Jesus, who comes in and fills our hearts? Holy Spirit, right? And I know Mrs. Stackhouse has taught this before in Sunday school, and Mr. Stackhouse, about the, something about the Holy Spirit. And there's nine, nine. What, there's nine fruit, fruit, fruit. The Holy Spirit, there's fruit of the Holy Spirit. There's fruit of the Holy Spirit. And there's nine of them, and it talks about them in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. And so we know one of them is love, and there's joy, right? Joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So the fruit of Holy Spirit, which is joy, it can always be in you, in you all the time, even in the bad times. So that joy that comes from Holy Spirit, that's the joy that we have always. We can rejoice in the Lord always because we have Holy Spirit. He's in us, helping us have the joy. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I have some cups here. I don't know if this pole is kind of, you okay right here where I have it here? 
Okay, I have some cups. Okay, this cup has pray on it. This one has believe. And this cup, one has Bible, right? And one has, ooh, problems and troubles on it. And one has Holy Spirit. And this is you. This is you, okay? You're the glass, okay? So everybody is here. And when you believe in Jesus, oh, I forgot to do something, I think, right? Can someone fill this? Did I forget to do that? Yes, I did. Can you fill this glass up about mm, just half full? I forgot one cup of water for myself. Sorry about that. I think I did. I think, unless I'm remembering wrong. Okay. He's going to fill that cup up. We're going to pretend that you have just put asked Jesus into your heart, and he's filling you now, and he's cleansing you with his blood, okay? That, that first part of the water, this is Jesus in you, okay? This is now, you've asked Jesus in your heart. I just want to get my paper just in case I forget something. I don't want to forget anything important here. So when you trust in Jesus as your Savior, his Holy Spirit comes to live in you, right? Holy Spirit comes in. He cleanses your heart. The blood of Jesus washes you, right? Washes you. The Word of God, the blood of Jesus, Holy Spirit, they all, it all works together to clean you up, right? It's him inside of you now, right? Holy Spirit is inside of you, right? Okay, that's you with Holy Spirit inside of you. Now... I have here some other water, and I have some vinegar, and I have some baking soda. So I'm going to use baking soda and vinegar today in a different way to teach us how we can still have joy in the bad times, okay? So we know that Satan, what he wants to do, he wants to cause bad things so that you start to have doubt, you start to worry, you start to complain, right? Right? We start to worry. We start to get fearful, right? That's what, that's what Satan wants to do, right? He wants to make us fearful, right? He wants us to worry and to doubt God. He wants us to doubt God. He wants us to stop trusting God. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants you to think that God didn't know that this thing was going to happen, that God, you know, oops, God doesn't know what's happening now, and oops, you know, you better fear, be fearful now because guess what? This, this, this trouble is bigger than God. And sometimes we forget that, everybody, that God knows everything before it happens, right? So we have to keep trusting God even when a bad thing happens. So this vinegar is in this one. Problems and troubles come. That's the vinegar, okay? I'm going to put it in here. Okay, problems and troubles start to happen. Now, vinegar actually is an acidic acid that actually, it does taste sour, but it actually is not poisonous. Okay? In fact, we use vinegar in our salad dressings. We actually do use it to make things taste good. But at the same time, it is sour, and it is not always so nice, but it doesn't kill you. But it's not so nice. It is sour, okay? So problems and troubles come, okay? There you are. Now, what do I need to do? I need to pray, right? Help, Lord. I'm going to pray. This has water in it, okay? I need to pray. So I'm going to put a little more water in there. I'm praying to Jesus. I'm asking him to help me. I'm trusting him. I'm saying, God, you know this bad thing was going to happen. Help me, Lord, through this time. I trust in you, Jesus. I do not want to worry. Lord, I do feel worried, but help me not to worry. We pray. And then, because we believe, we keep trusting Jesus, right? And we believe. And we show that we believe in Jesus, right? Okay. But now that we've done, we've done our part, like we've prayed and we're, we're putting our trust in Jesus, then we, but we also need to hear from God too, don't we? And how do we hear from Jesus, Isaac? What does that say? Bible. This says Bible on it. B-I-B-L-E. So we need to read the Bible because the Bible is God's word. We need to hear from God and know what God says to us to help us not be afraid. So when we go to the Bible, we can be encouraged, can't we? Just like Jeremiah, he called on the Lord, right? And whenever we ask and believe in faith, that's what it tells us in Matthew, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. 
And so the Bible, and then I read the Word of God, and I hear what God says to me, that I can trust in Him. And we read about in Psalms, Psalm 56, verse 2 to 4 says, this is things that we need to hear. When we're going through troubles, we need to be reminded how people in the Bible went through troubles. So David, he said in Psalm 56, he said, My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, God, whose word I praise. In God I will trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? So we read the Bible. Because we realize we're not the only one that goes through tough times. And people in the Bible, they know what it's like. They knew what it was like. Okay, this is my last cup. I have Holy Spirit here. He's going to be my baking soda today, okay? He's the, ba the baking soda. So Holy Spirit, so we know that Holy Spirit is inside of us all this time, even when the troubles have come. Holy Spirit was already there inside of me too, right? God was there with me. But when you pray, when you believe, and you read the Bible, God's Spirit living in you, He will actually help you. He will actually help you change your thoughts, your worry thoughts, your, your fearful thoughts, and your attitudes, you know, towards the thing that you're facing. So let's watch what happens here. So what's bubbling up inside of me now? The joy of the Lord. Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord can bubble up inside of me because you know what? In what happens with uh, vinegar and actually baking soda, what happens is the acidic acid of vinegar, it actually neutralizes the baking soda and then a gas, carbon dioxide, is produced. And that's the, that's the bubbles that come up. It's the carbon dioxide. And it, you know, the bubbles are overflowing because of the reaction. And so this baking soda reminds us that, you know, God's Holy Spirit is deep inside of us. And when troubles do come, Holy Spirit can bubble up in us. Holy Spirit is, He's in us. He's the one that gives us a joy. It doesn't come from outside. Our joy doesn't come from the outside. Our joy comes in from the inside because it comes from Holy Spirit. So no matter what's going on in the outside of us and the situation we're in, Holy Spirit, He is in us, and He's going to always be the joy for us, even through the hard times. And so we thank the Lord that, you know what, that joy is even our strength. And that's what it tells us in Nehemiah 8, verse 10. It says, do not grieve, do not be sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so the next time that you face a problem, you will remember what happens when you add baking soda and vinegar together. So even if there's a problem... Holy Spirit is there, and guess what? Bubble, bubble, bubble. The joy is still there regardless. Even though the vinegar was there, that Holy Spirit, he causes joy in our lives because he is, he is the one who gives us the fruit of joy to, in our lives that will overflow. Because guess who's in control of all things? God is in control. And so, and I don't know if you guys remember this, when I did the, the one about the balloons and I said how problems build our faith muscles up and I popped the balloon because if we don't have problems, we're going to have puny muscles. Our faith muscles will be puny. I don't know if you remember that. One of my first lessons I did in the sanctuary here, I put a balloon in my sleeve and I popped it because I said, when we have problems, guess what? Our faith muscles are being built up, just like when we work out. And we rip our muscles to make them bigger. So we might be feeling like we're being ripped up when we're in the problems, but really our faith is getting bigger. Because if in the natural, if someone can work out in the natural and feel the pain of their muscles ripping so they can get stronger and big, bigger, so we can do that. We know problems might hurt, but at the same time, our faith is getting bigger, just like when I was showing you how the balloon. So these problems that we have, as we know in James... Do you remember James? That was the verse we shared that day. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble. And when you do, think of it as a pure joy. How many people have pure joy today? Your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. And you must allow this strength to finish its work. So God is doing a good work in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
That was a good word, right? Amen. A good word for every one of us. Thank you. This is it. We're all children of God, every one of us. And uh, it's just that some are born again and some are not, right? But God is the creator of all man. And so he is people, he is a father to all of the human race, whether people are born again or not. But we just are so grateful and thankful to God that when we're born again by his spirit, amen, then we, uh, we have been reconciled with God through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the redemption work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we just thank the Lord that we as his people, that we have the joy of the Lord, amen, which is our strength and our salvation. So whom shall we fear? No one. We're not supposed to fear anyone, right? And lots of times we use the word to fear the Lord, but really what it means is to revere the Lord, means to honor the Lord. It means to, to love him and obey him because he's a good, good father. And uh, just like the song was that we've been able to come into the father's house and everybody checked their shame at the door, right? <laughs> Amen. Because he has delivered us and he has set us free of sin. He has set us free of sin, uh, guilt, shame, whatever all that would be. Um, all I know is that the Lord is so good all the time, and uh, he just wants us to keep on rejoicing in him. Amen. So I'm going to pray right now. So let us pray. I just want to bless the Lord and just ask for his help. So Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord, for the word that we've had, Father, and that it would be sealed in our hearts, which Pastor Jan has brought forth, Father, to the children and to every one of us as children of God. And that, Lord, that your joy will just um, overtake us all the time in our life as we will keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus, and not believing our problems and our worries and our troubles can harm us or, or to um, take us away from you, God. Because, God, you are our keeper. You will keep us and protect us. So, Lord, I thank you for that. So, Lord, I just ask right now that, Lord, that you will be a guard and a watchman to my mouth, Lord. I pray that the words that I say, um, Lord, in your teaching, God, that you have laid on my heart uh, to bring forth today, I pray that we will have ears to hear um, and truly understand what you are saying to every one of us, Lord, whether these ones are here in the house, whether the ones that are at home at Zoom, or whether the ones that may even be on Facebook uh, today or later on. And so, Lord, I just thank you that, Lord, that we can just continue to glorify you, Jesus, because we need you. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the best teacher going, and you are the, <laughs> the comforter. You're the one that stands by us. Lord, you're the one that just continues on revealing Jesus Christ to us. And so, Lord, we just continue to acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, who's here in the house with us. And also, Lord, I thank you for the great cloud of witness that I witnessed today, even myself personally. Lord, I felt, God, that the room was just so packed full, Lord God, because your angels are rejoicing when we rejoice and praise the Lord. And so, Lord, I thank you now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I want you to put your hands on your ears again. It's symbolic. And that because God has given us ears to hear. Say it. God's given me an ear to hear, to hear his voice so that I can walk in confidence with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy's underneath our feet. Every um, deaf, demonic spirit and dumb spirit is broken and canceled in the precious name of Jesus. Every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of tongue that has risen up against us uh, as God's children, blood-bought children, is broken and canceled in the name of Jesus. And I continue to take authority over an ingratitude spirit 
right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I break its hold and I break the curse of an ingratitude spirit right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God has given us a house of thanksgiving. He has given us a house of his presence. And so we are going to have hearts of gratitude and giving him praise and honor and glory for one another. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, turn your Bibles to Luke 17. And I thank you, Lord, for your help, that you will help me to bring forth this message as you have been speaking to me concerning this. Luke 17. Verses 11 to 19. Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. And as your Bibles will tell you that as he went on, Jesus, as he went on his way to Jerusalem, it occurred that Jesus was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Okay? He was right at the very borders as he was going to Jerusalem. And verse 12 says, and as he was going into one village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. Okay, leprosy. Leprosy in the Bible tells us in Leviticus 13 and even in Leviticus 14, but it tells us that leprosy was a terrible disease. It was, it was like an epidemic. It came upon people. People had to be isolated and they had their own colonies. They had their own places where they had to be. They had to separate themselves from their loved ones. If they were married, they had to separate themselves from their spouse. They had to separate themselves from their children. They had to separate themselves from the community. They had to separate themselves of even having fellowship one with another. They were put in a place of a colony in isolation because of the epidemic that it could cause this leprosy. Now, what does leprosy do? It eats your, your body. It eats every part of it where fingers will fall off, like your feet, limbs. It will attack your face. It is no respect at all to your body because what it does is it eats away the flesh. It can take up to 30 years 30 years of having leprosy before it will take your life. Because what it is, it's a very painful, slow epidemic. It just eats away. And it causes you, it's just like anybody, if anybody's ever known of anybody that's had gangrene, what it does is it smells. If you've ever been around anybody that's had an infection, a really bad infection, it stinks. And so people that had leprosy, they were foul smelling. They had this odor because of rotting flesh. And so it wasn't a very nice, um, uh, you know, for anyone to have had leprosy. And so Jesus, he was coming down from Jerusalem and he, or sorry, he was on his way to Jerusalem, and so he was crossing out the borders right there of Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going there, what he ended up doing is that he came, he, there was ten lepers who ended up coming to him. And what they ended up doing, it says in verse 12, and as he was going into one village, they stood at a distance. I want you to see that, that these lepers stood at a distance from Jesus. But what they did is they raised their voices and they called out, Jesus, because they were far away in a distance. You see, they couldn't come near him because of the epidemic. But they were crying out, mercy. Mercy. I heard, I heard the cry of mercy today through the intercessor today. Mercy. See, when you know that you're the redeemed of the Lord, you'll cry out mercy 
Because lots of times you realize, oh, Lord, is my heart completely right with you all the time? Am I continually, you know, is my, is my heart humble before you? Am I acknowledging you in everything that takes place today? Mercy. The Bible says his mercies are new each and every morning. And it says that his mercies is upon the just and upon the unjust. So these lepers, what they were doing is they were calling out to Jesus. And they were saying, Master, take pity and have mercy on us. You know, and when Jesus, he actually, he saw them. He said to them, go at once and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cured and made clean. You know, the Lord was making it very clear to even though that he was that he was a priest, you know, uh, Jesus as being our high priest as he is. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. But when these these ones that cried out for mercy from him, he ended up telling them that they needed to go and they needed to do what Leviticus 13 and 14 said. They were to go to the priest and really what a priest in those days they almost operated like a medical person <laughs> because when the person went to the priest, it was the priest who examined them to see whether or not this skin rash was, was a, a, a leprosy or whether that this person just had a, had a normal rash, uh, you know, and this is what they had to do. They all had to go to the priest, and it was up to the priest to examine them. God had set in the priest. That's what God has done, and God is the one who sets things in order in his, in his kingdom. He sets his order in the house of the Lord, even like here. He sets his order. He, he, he put, places people in, even in headship, and the people in headship, he's given them power, and he's given them authority, and he's given them even the discernment for them to operate in the wisdom. And so what Jesus did, he ended up saying to these lepers, he says, go. He gave them a command. He gave them a command. And they went, says, and they went and they were cured and made clean. Do you know that they had to obey before they got cleansed? They wouldn't have gotten cleansed if they hadn't have gone, if they hadn't obeyed the very word that Jesus gave them. Now, what they could have thought is, I'm not getting what I wanted. Right? What would you think if you went up and you were praying and asking God, just says, go. Come on, go. And lots of times God is giving us, and he's telling us, he's giving us the green, the, the, you know, the green light for us to go. And lots of times what we're doing is we're not being obedient to the word of God. We're fighting, we're justifying, we're arguing with God. But what they did is they, they went, and as they were going, I want you to see this, as they were going, as they were going away in obedience, they started to realize they were cleansed. Now, how would they know that they were cleansed? I would imagine they would start to realize, oh, there's a finger that's just grown on me. Oh, you know, oh, they would start feeling, a leg started to grow. They were cleansed. Miracles started to happen with them. But it happened as they were walking in faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And God knew right now when Jesus was asking them, he made them walk in faith. That's what brought the cleansing part to these lepers. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles before I go on any further here. I want you to turn your Bibles to Mark 9 now. Mark 9. And what you will find in Mark 9 at verse 17, you will find out of another situation here. And in this situation here, this here ended up that there was a father who had a child. 
And what he had done is he had brought his son to the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ for them to pray for his son because his son ended up having, he was demon-possessed. And what the Bible says is that when he ended up coming to meet with Jesus, in verse 17 there, and one of the throng replied to him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he had a dumb spirit. And wherever he lays hold of him, you know, he, he dashes him and, and he throws him down. He goes into convulsions. He foams even at the mouth. He even grinds his teeth. You know, he, he's just wasting away my son, he was saying to, to Jesus. And he says, and I asked your disciples to drive him out, and they were not even able to do it. And he answered them, and he said, oh, unbelieving generation without any faith, how long shall I have? To do with you. Now, how do you think those disciples felt when Jesus said that publicly? See, God's wanting us to grow up. He really is. And he addressed, the, he addressed them right there publicly. And he probably had more than 12 at that time. I don't know. Because I know he had lots of disciples. Because he was the one that ended up giving them power and authority to go and pray for the sick, right? Cast out demons in my name. And he sent them out even two by two, so he did. But here we find here that he ended up, he did rebuke them publicly. And so they brought the boy then to Jesus. And when the spirit actually saw Jesus, what it did is it just what? It just threw them down on the ground, and it did what it always did to the boy, right? And Jesus, he asked the father, and he just said to the father, how long has, has this, this been going on? And the father says, it's been going on ever since he's been a small child. Since he was a boy. And so verse 22 says, and it has often thrown him both even in the fire. And in the water, intending to kill him. But if you cannot do anything, do have pity on us and help us, if you can do anything. I want you to see this. Now, Jesus said to him, you say to me, if you can do anything? I want you to see here what Jesus was saying to this father. He was saying, now, you brought him, and now you're saying, if you can do anything? Jesus said, then why? Because all things are possible, you know, to him who believes. Now, I want you to see that. Now, you need to underline that. All things are possible to him who believes. You see, people, if you're going to get healed, you've got to have faith in the healer, Jesus Christ. And that means you must believe in him. You just can't say, I believe. Because this man here, what he ended up saying and Jesus literally said to him, if you can do anything, all things are possible to him who believes. So what Jesus was saying to the father is because of your unbelief, your son is in this condition. That's what he was saying. It's because of your unbelief, your son is in this condition. You brought him to me, even to my disciples, and you didn't have the faith or the belief that your son would be delivered, and yet you have come, and you've even said to me, Is it if, if you can, heal him. There, Jesus knew he could heal him. He came and he brought them to the disciples because he had heard that the disciples were healing. He knew that he had heard that this man, Jesus, was healing people. But this father ended up, he, he had unbelief in his heart. And Jesus made it very clear to him as well. You see, God speaks truth. He is the greatest teacher going. At once, it says, the father of the boy gave an eager, uh, piercing, my, the Amplified Bible says, cry. A piercing cry. When he heard the truth, when he was standing right in front, and when the truth was said to him, pride didn't take a hold of him. He started to cry, and the tears started to flow from the man's face. And he said, Lord, I believe. 
And it might, the Amplified Bible says he just kept repeating himself. I believe, I believe. But then he, what he said, and he constantly said, but help my weaknesses of faith. Help my weakness of faith. Because he couldn't argue with God. And what the spirit of the living God is wanting us to do to stop arguing with God when God is speaking to us through the word of God or whether God is speaking to us through the preaching of the word of God, the teaching of the word of God, through the word of knowledge, through the word of wisdom. God's really truly asking us as his people to keep humbling ourselves in such a way so that we can really hear God. And not allow our hearts to become so full of unbelief because we end up going on with our own reasoning on our own understanding. So Jesus was saying, but when Jesus noticed the crowd of the people running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit. It was the part is I truly believe Jesus would have said a whole lot more to this individual. But because the people started to come, out of his great mercy, he ended up rebuking the unclean spirit, and he set the boy free. Isn't it wonderful that God is a God of love? God had mercy on that boy, but yet he also corrected the boy's father because he knew that the father said he had belief by bringing him, but he didn't ask Jesus properly. If you can, if you can. That's not a very nice way to ask Jesus who is healing the sick, casting out demons. If you can. Wow, there sure wasn't a right spirit there, was there? Right attitude, right? So lots of times God is asking us, is our attitude an attitude of, of, of actually faith? You can say you can believe in God, but where's the faith? See, Jesus is looking for faith. So if you go back to Luke 17, this is what Jesus was looking for. He was looking for faith in the Father, and he was looking for faith in the, in the, in the lepers. Because Jesus today is looking for faith in every one of your lives today. Because if you're not living in faith, then, then you're not pleasing to God. And you leaning on our, on our own understanding and just living out a life as a Christian, come on, without faith isn't pleasing to God at all. And what God is wanting to, Jesus said, I came to set the captives free. He says, I came to bind up the brokenhearted. He said, he said I, I, I came, you know, and by his stripes we were healed. Every one of us were healed. Every one of us has been healed. But you know what's really happening sometimes with the body of Christ? More of the Christians are getting sick. Why? Some can, be, some can be related to physical things. Come on. But some of it can be related to the conditions of one heart. And this is what Jesus was talking about to the Father. And this is what Jesus was talking about even with the lepers. And I want you to see this. So as they were walking, as I said, they started, you know, they started getting their limbs back. They knew. And I want you to see this. Jesus was telling them, go to the priest and have the priest announce to you that you're cleansed. That was what they had to do. And then one of them, upon seeing that he was cured, turned back, recognizing and thanking and praising God with a loud voice. So this man, he was coming back. He was hollering and screaming so he was and praising God, right? He was, you know, doing everything that a lot of us do here in the house here, jumping up and down, praising God. I imagine maybe, maybe we don't know, but this guy maybe only had one leg. Come on. He may have only had, you know, you know one hand. We really don't know really. Maybe he didn't have a nose. Come on. Maybe he didn't even have a mouth anymore. That's what leprosy does. Just eats away. But he came back just loud, excited, just shouting on to Jesus, giving Jesus all the praise and thanksgiving, so much so that when he got to Jesus, he fell and he prostrated himself right down at, down at Jesus' feet. Thanking him, and the Amplified Bible says, over and over and over. 
But the Bible also tells us he was a Samaritan. He was an alien. He was an outcast. He wasn't a Jew. And look what Jesus ended up saying. Then Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the nine? I just want you to know, Jesus does look. And Jesus does watch over when he heals people and when he delivers people. Some may think, oh, God, you know, you know, oh, God, you know, like because somebody comes and, and get, stands up and gives a testimony, well, God may be saying, where's all the other testimonies? But this Samaritan, this one and her, you know, the one that you, the one that you would least expect, the one that was least expected came to Jesus and thanked him. The other nine probably could have been Jews. Just remember, they had the faith to cry out to Jesus, but they didn't have a heart of gratitude to go back and thank him for what he had done. Lots of people have the sin of leprosy, and it's called sin, where they give in to their sinful nature, where they give in to their sexual appetites, where they give in to bitterness and unforgiveness, where they give in to everything that, that through competition, through jealousy, through envy, whatever it is. Sin is sin. We're the one that measures and makes one sin bigger than another sin where God just says no sin can come near him. God is dealing with his people. And God's wanting to bring healing and set people free, just like he wanted to set them free. But because they had their faith, I want you to see this, because all ten had faith, all ten got healed. All ten got cleansed. But the one came back. And look, verse 19, he said, he said to the man that was prostrated himself down at Jesus' feet, crying out, thanking him over and over and over, get up and go on your way. He told him again, get up, now go on your way. Your faith, your confidence, as the Amplified Bible says, that springs from your belief in God has restored you to salvation. It says health. And I looked it up in the Strong's. And I can't pronounce the Greek words of what was said. But the word cleansed and the word health are two different Greek words. And what it meant is that when this, this Samaritan man came to Jesus and he worshipped Jesus and gave him thanksgiving for his healing, that he cleansed him from leprosy, the man ended up getting more than what he asked for. The man ended up getting the biggest spiritual blessing that only the Savior could give. Complete wholeness. Not just on the physical part of being delivered and set free from leprosy, but to the part he was made whole on the inside, that whatever was bothering that man on the inside, the pain of being isolated, the pain of being rejected. Come on, folks. If that was you, wouldn't, wouldn't there be some a little bit of unforgiveness? Wouldn't there maybe be some resentment? Yeah. That man, you know what ended up? Because, you know, probably the other nine all went home to their spouses. They all went home to their children. They all went home to their community because they didn't go back and thank the, the master at all. So what did they do? They just went on with life. Oh, praise the Lord. I can go back to work. Ha. Whoo, praise the Lord. I can go back and do what I've done all along. Ha, huh, I've been cleansed. I'm no more in isolation. Oh, I'm free. I'm liberated. 
didn't have a right heart attitude at all. But the Samaritan, he didn't go. He didn't run to his family. He didn't run to his children. He didn't run to his, to his wife. He didn't run back into the village and say, oh, look, 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 I'm clean, 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 clean. Look, look I, I, I can come back now. You, you can accept me. No more rejection. No, he didn't do that. He still didn't get caught up in his everyday affairs as being a human being. But he went to the master, and he thanked him. And then he got permission from the master. Go. Now you can go because you're free. The other nine got healing in their physical bodies, but they didn't get what the one that got when he came back to Jesus. The Lord is speaking to, this, to his church. He's wanting his church to be healed, not just physically. What Jesus is concerned about is the heart. He's always been concerned about the heart. Because you can be healed, and if your heart isn't right, then the leprosy can come back on you. I believe, I, you know, it doesn't say anything here. I just know that they were cleansed. But this man, he knew that his life was right with God. What joy he would have. He had joy because he was, he, was, he was cleansed and his body was healed. But can you imagine the joy that overtook him from the inside? That's what Pastor Jim was talking about today. It was so excellent. Like, you know, this is it. I don't know. You know, I don't know what she's going to share because this is it. We believe in trusting the Holy Spirit in this house, that the Holy Spirit, when we have the Holy Spirit, he's going to teach and he's going to have every one of us as leaders to teach and to say what he wants us to say. When there's trust, that can be done. You know, God has been saying, and as I said here last week, God is saying, for you will obey your belief. You will obey your belief, and that is where your faith will be exercised in, in what you believe. God is truly healing us as his people because we have faith and because we have belief in him. Amen? We are the ones that have been so thankful. And we will continue on to give testimonies when we say, I don't know how many times the enemy has tried to kill me through art, car accidents, through, through sickness, disease. <sighs> However, but the Lord has been the one that has spared my life. We don't ever change our testimony. The Lord has changed my life, spared my life. He has healed my life. He has not allowed the enemy to overtake my life where the enemy wants to come to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? God is placing the demand on our faith in this house. He's placing the demand of faith in every one of your lives individually and corporately. And I'm here to say to you that if, you are, if your heart isn't right with God, then you won't be exercising your belief rightly. Your faith will not be exercised rightly. You will be just living your life as a Christian, and you will have no joy. You will not have happiness because you will know that nothing is going working out the way you want it to. What you're having to do is you're having to work so hard to get anything that you have need of, where the Bible says, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. It is our faith and our confidence that keeps springing up within us. And this is what is pleasing to God. In Matthew 8, verse 2, it tells us that Jesus, there was another leper 
that came to him. And he was up on the mountain, and transfiguration had just taken place, and he came down the mountain. And there was this leper. Now, this leper, he did not keep at a distance. It tells us that this leper, he literally came before Jesus, and the Bible tells us that Jesus literally touched that leopard. He literally laid his hands on that leopard. And that leopard, he was healed instantly. And he was told, don't tell anyone until you go to the priest and present an offering for a testimony then to the people. You know, sometimes you're going out, people are going out, they get what, God, what they're praying and they're asking God. And they get an answer to their prayer. But what they're not doing is they're not coming into the house of the Lord and giving the Lord the praise the way in which that God says, go to the priest first. What happens is they're just going to their fellow man. And I know we're all priests. The Bible says that. And First Peter tells us we're, we're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. But there's a difference between someone who is the pastor than who is your brother or sister in Christ. And Jesus said to this man, you need to go to the priest. You cannot tell anybody that you know now you're completely healed because it was different. Those other ten, they were walking. We don't know, you see, we don't know how far in their journey that they got to before they realized they were cleansed. But this man knew immediately. He knew immediately that he was healed. See, Jesus knows exactly what we're going to do, that we're going to get so excited because of an answer to prayer or whatever it is that God has done for us that sometimes we forget to go into the house of the Lord and give the thanksgiving due to the one who did it. To the one that you serve. That's why we come to church, people. I know a lot of people say a lot of things about the church. Well, you're the church. I'm looking at the church. You see, when people start speaking about the church, they better be very, very careful because you're either in the church, a blood-bought child of God, or you're not. That's the church. That's the ecclesia. It's the body of Christ. So we're either, we're either in Christ with Christ being the head and all of us as the body functioning, <laughs> or we're saying we have, we're serving God, but we don't belong to the church. How can you belong to God when the church belongs to God, when he's the head? See, God is wanting his children to start walking in obedience to what the scriptures say. And you see, if, you don't read, if we don't read the word, then you're not going to hear from God rightly at all. Because what the Holy Spirit will always do is he will always have us obey the word. Because he and the word are one, amen? So we thank the Lord. And then... Once, once you give a testimony and once you give praise, you know, if you come into the house of the Lord and you give a testimony and you give praise to Jesus and honoring to Jesus, then everybody gets to hear it and know it. You see? It just isn't going to one person, oh, do you know what the Lord did? He answered this prayer for me. I'm just so thankful. Praise the Lord. But then when you come into the house of the Lord, you never give the praise to whom it's due. Come on. Jesus, the Holy Spirit's trying to teach us something in this house. You know, I thought of, uh, in closing, I thought of even the part of with this leprosy as the Lord was saying, you know, how he healed these lepers, you know, and how that Samaritan leper, he got healed of all his emotional pain and, and all of this trauma that he had from this epidemic of this leprosy that he had. And, you know, that's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to heal us from the inside out, you know. And lots of times we as God's people, we're just wanting the outside healed, you know. And Jesus said it isn't, it isn't you know, 
It isn't, it isn't what the, it's on the outside, it's what is on the inside that ends up defiling a person. But I thought of, you know, with all of this, God ended up, there was somebody else that had leprosy, and his name was Nathan, and he was a ruler, right? And he was ended up being told what? Go, go dip in the River Jordan, right? And he was, he was upset, wasn't he? But you can understand him being upset. He wasn't a Christian, was he? No, he wasn't. It was the part is he came, he came, he came to the servant Elisha or Elisha because of a testimony of a servant girl. And then, you know, and it was wonderful that they, that the, they said to him, well, what have you got to lose, Nathan? What have you got to lose by going down into Jordan? I mean, you got leprosy. What have you got to lose, man? And so what he did is he went down in the water. And he came up and he was totally healed because he did what? Obeyed. Obeyed. This is how what God is saying. If we would just walk in obedience and leave the results up to Jesus. We just need to walk in obedience. Be humble children of God. Because there was somebody else that had leprosy who ended up getting healed. And that's taken out of Numbers 9. And you can turn your Bibles there, and then I'm going to close. It's in Numbers, and it's chapter 9. Sorry, Numbers 12. I'm sorry, not Numbers 9, Numbers 12. <laughs> sorry. Numbers 12. This is the other person who ended up getting leprosy. Now, Miriam. And Aaron talked against Moses, their brother. Now, one translation says they started, what they were doing is they were criticizing him in their conversations, talking about him. See, criticism to a leader is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Because most pastors, even God, even, you know, some may not want to agree with this, but lots of times some pastors, every pastor has to walk in the prophetic anointing. It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ because only pastors, they need to preach from the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And all I know is that God will deal with people who criticize leadership. Whether leadership is wrong or right. If you criticize them, you're the one that's going to suffer. And God sees it as a sin of leprosy. It's right here. And what they ended up, they, they were upset at Moses because he married a Cushite woman. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only, only by Moses? I guess they didn't agree with it at all, did they? <laughs> So they just thought, well, they could just slander him. Come into agreement and slander. But look what God said about that, you know. He said, now the man Moses was very meek and he was very gentle and kind. And he was a very humble person, but he was strong. And lots of times we don't even understand what meekness means. It means to be kind in your heart. It means to be loving, holding no records of any wrong. Being very gentle, being willing to go the extra mile. God was pleased with him. And he said, you know, he said he was humble above all the men on the face of the earth. That's so powerful, the way God spoke to him. Just like God spoke about Job. There is no one as righteous as my servant Job. You know, you know, you know something God could say, God to say to any one of us, to the accuser, there is no one as righteous as Anita. That's what God does. He will just go and he will defend us as a child of God. He will defend us if our heart is right with him. But if our heart is critical... And doesn't you're having a heart of ingratitude 
and not in thanksgiving of where your church is, your home is, your pastor is, your parents are, your boss, whatever, our prime minister. The whole thing is what God is saying is we're to be content and we are to have a right heart relationship with God, and if our heart relationship is right with God, it's because our heart is right with one another. But if our heart is not right with one another, with one person, your heart isn't right with God. You may not like what I'm preaching, but I preach the truth. Because what we have found in this house was what in person sin did. God is speaking. God is speaking. And suddenly the Lord said to Moses, and Aaron and Miriam, he said, he said, come on out. You know, God, he spoke to all three of them. There was, there was the part. There was no individualism of correction. He said to them, come. Come into the tent of the meeting. And, let's, you know, and the three of them, they all came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud, and he stood at the tent door and called Aaron and Miriam, and they came forward. I would imagine they all saw the cloud. Come on, didn't they watch the cloud by day and follow the cloud by day and the pillar by night? Well, there God did. He came right out in front of everybody, the cloud. Hello, people. It's time to get out of childishness and to rise up. Rise up in the spirit of the Lord. Let's be humble. And so he said, hear now my words. This is what he said. Hear now my words, verse 6. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. But not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted and faithful in my house. And with him I speak mouth to mouth, clearly and not in dark speeches. And behold the form of the Lord. When then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. He departed. Do you get the word? He departed. And when the cloud departed from over the tent, and behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said to Moses, O oh my Lord, I plead with you, lay not the sin upon us in which we have done foolishly, in which we have sinned. And he confessed it. He was an intercessor, and he said, we have sinned. Some have said to me, you know, why was it that Miriam had the leprosy and not Aaron? I believe she was the instigator. Because Aaron was the high priest, right? And Moses was, uh, uh, Miriam was noted as being the prophetess. And what she ended up, she ended up, you know, with what she said and what ended up happening. And she actually seduced even Aaron into it. But he sinned as well. But he was able to be, go into intercession and just to be able to say, we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead and half decomposed when she comes out of their mother's womb. And Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O Lord, I beseech you. But the Lord said, even to Moses, he said, You know, if her father had even spit in her face, should she not be ashamed for seven days? So Miriam was even, she had to go into isolation for seven days. Even though she was healed, cleansed, she had to go into isolation for seven days. And after that, he w she was brought in again. You know, and if you notice it there, it says as well, it affected the whole camp because it said they did not move on. God wants us to have a heart of thanksgiving, hearts of gratitude, a heart that truly respects God in his word that will listen to what the spirit of the Lord is saying let us pray so Heavenly Father I thank you right now for your love I thank you Lord for your word I thank you that Lord that we have gone through isolation through an epidemic of this COVID-19 and Lord we're still in it 
And Lord, what you are saying to your people, this is not the excuse as to why. You cannot give God the honor and give it rightfully due to him by being in his presence and being in the presence of of his people. I just know that you're speaking to the lives of your people. You're speaking to them because they're fearful. They're not walking in faith many times. Lord, you're not condemning your people. You are pitying them. And just like those lepers said, have mercy on us and have pity us. And the Lord, you do. You have mercy and you pity us. Because you know lots of times we're so foolish by the things that we say and the things that we do. Lord, today, we thank you that you're healing us. You're setting us free. We just give you praise in this place. We acknowledge you as being Lord of this place, that Jesus Christ is Lord of Jehovah Jireh Christian Ministries, that it is Jehovah Jireh, his name. And Lord, you will vindicate your name. And we thank you that, Lord, that every one of us that belong in this place, that you will also, you will vindicate us. Because, God, you know that our hearts will be in unity. And I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of unity. The God that you are bringing in this place And, Lord, I wouldn't have never, ever thought how you would ever bring unity into this house. And we give you praise, Lord, for that. Because, Lord, you're doing it in all your places. You're doing it in your ecclesia, Lord God, because that's the power and that's the authority and that's when you start moving. And so, Lord, we just thank you today. And so, Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, that you will just continue to speak to our hearts. And you will show us today, even before we have our communion, you will show us, Lord, if we have ingratitude, lack of it, total lack of gratitude towards our pastors, towards our fellow man in Christ Jesus, even towards all those in authority, whether we agree with them or not. Because, Lord God, we've been called to bless. And we just thank you that, Lord, that we live in a nation, that, God, that you are pouring out your spirit. And we thank you, Lord, that you're pouring out even your spirit on us today. Because you're binding up our wounds. You're just removing shock and trauma off of our lives. All the effects of isolation, what COVID-19 has done. All the effects of it. You're wanting us to be healed of it, set free of it. Because, Lord God, it has no part of us, the redeemed of the Lord. And the Lord, that if anybody does get it, it does not have the power to take our life out. And we thank you, Lord, for that. Because when our heart is right with you, Lord, nothing, nothing can harm us. Your word says that. So, Lord, we're going to exercise our faith more and more in belief of who we believe that Jesus Christ is. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, he is our Messiah, he is our bridegroom. And that he is with us, and he is greater who is in us than he that is in the world. And that he is a merciful, loving Savior. And so, Lord, we just thank you for everything that you're doing in all of our lives today, in this service today, here in Jehovah Jireh Christian Ministries. 
So, Lord, I just thank you right now. And may, Lord, you bless every person that is listening to this on Zoom or Facebook. May you bless them, Lord God, that they would be healed in the name of Jesus because of their willingness to humble themselves and to let you, God, be God and watch and see the salvation of the Lord. And we just thank you that a broken, contrite heart you'll never despise. So we thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.